What's going on everybody, Josh Pocock here, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at potentially the best AI agent open source that's out there right now. We took a look at Agent X as well as other AI agents. Now we're going to be looking at Open Interpreter, showing you how to install it locally and show you what it can actually do. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so if you're not familiar with Open Interpreter, we'll do a brief overview before we get into it. Like I mentioned at the start, we've done videos on Agent Zero as well as a few others. I was actually going to do a video just as a side note on Agent K. If you don't, haven't heard of it. Um, I, I was There's a few other ones I, was gonna, I may do videos on, but long story short, I was having an issue with installing Agent K, um, and it was kind of just really just annoying because, you know, if you saw my video on Agent Zero, um, it's it's okay. I know you know the found it's a newer project. The founder's been improving it, so good on him. Uh, looks like they just added some updates with the UI. Haven't tested that out yet. Maybe I'll test it out, and if it's worth another video, maybe I'll do an update. But with these other tools, um, you know, Agent K. I mean, it's you know, I couldn't fin even install it because this, there's some issues with the current repo dependencies and whatnot. So it's not being updated as frequently. Um, yeah. It's just kind of, the, you know, annoying, right? And even when we do do some tests with a lot of these models, you don't actually get the desired output. Now, I'm very excited about Open Interpreter, and we're going to go ahead and start using it here. But Open Interpreter essentially lets LLMs run code, Python, J JavaScript, Shell, and more locally. You can chat with Open Interpreter through ChatGPT-like interface in your terminal by running the interpreter um, command after installing. So this provides a natural language interface to your computer's general purpose capabilities. So you can create, edit photos, videos, PDFs, etc. Control a Chrome browser to perform research, plot, clean, and analyze large data sets, etc. Note you'll be asked to approve the code before you run it. Here's a little demo here. We're not going to watch the whole thing, but you can check this out. Link for the repo will be in the description down below. And it's very simple to actually install it. So that's what I really like too is like, a lot of these other tools, um, you know, it's just sometimes it's a little bit more complex to install. Sometimes they don't even work, but this one's very, very simple. You literally just run pip install, pip install open interpreter. And if you have any issues with it, just maybe ask ChatGPT if you do get any issues just with maybe certain dependencies or uh, things you need to update. And then after that, you just simply run interpreter. Okay. Now there's a couple other uh, ways you can start this up and I'll show you that in just a second So I'll leave a link to their docs and if you're gonna be using open interpreter and I'll, I'll probably do more videos on open interpreter as I you know begin to use it more often But uh, I am very excited about this tool and uh, you know as I learn new things I'll definitely keep you guys posted so make sure to subscribe to stay up to date But they have some good training and documentation here on the open interpreter docs First off too, like this is probably the most, at least as of today at, that I know of, this is the most like established open source um, LLM that can control your computer, run commands on your computer. All the other ones I've used, honestly, they just, I, I can't even like use them on the regular because they just, there's always stupid bugs that just don't work. Um, and yeah, so they just call like so many of these have these big claims like agent K says an auto agentic AGI that is self evolving and modular. Now granted, I didn't get to fully test it out, but like I said, a lot of these guys have big claims, but they don't actually with like hold up to the test. So we're going to see how open interpreter does, but now there's a couple different ways you can install it and run it. So I just covered the first way pip install, uh, open interpreter. So you would want to run that in your terminal all right so once you run that it's going to install everything um and you could also do it this way so there's local mode so pip install open interpreter local now this is if you're going to want to use models like llama file uh, olama whatever the case may be so you can use this with local models too which is really nice and then there's os mode. okay there's safe mode too but the cool thing too is os mode so this is highly experimental mode that allows open interpreter to control the operating system visually through the mouse and keyboard it provides a multi-modal llm like gpt4 vision with the necessary tools to capture screenshots of the display and interact with on-screen elements such as text icons 
he will try to use the most direct method to achieve the goal, like using Spotlight on Mac to open applications and use query parameters to the URL to open websites with additional information. OS mode is a work in progress and blah, blah, blah. You can check out their Discord. But to enable it, you just basically install it like I showed. And then you're going to run interpreter with the flag OS. Okay, so we're going to try a few different um, tests with open interpreter right now and see what it's actually made of. All right, so here I'm saying, please analyze the file, which is a CSV file in the path blank path and create a bar chart and of the data and a pie chart to help me analyze things. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay, so it's going to say first, I'll read the file and display its content. So boom, it's reading the file with open path, blah, 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 print content. Would you like to run this code? We're going to say yes. Oops, I forgot to put the dot CSV and I just renamed it just so it's easier. And now it's going to run that. So let's see, it's going to read the file and it's going to understand its structure. Okay, boom. And we, wow, like. This is just, honestly just even this command alone is night and day compared to at least from when I used uh, Agent Zero. Now, granted, like I said, you know, I'll, maybe I'll do some testing on the new updates because I know he has ruled out some new ones and um, nothing against that, you know, uh, project. It's a new project. This project's been around for a while. I'm just saying this is like this from as of I, what I know, this is like the top notch um, tool in this category. All right. So boom the csv has been successfully read in initial uh, and the initial data structure is now visible the columns appear to be representative metadata blah, blah blah form submissions so it's going to based on these columns okay i'm just going to say yes i'm not going to read the whole thing and it is you know writing the code here and wow look at that within two seconds it was able to analyze this data and plot this data in a graph right here wow so now it's like i love how how it's not just messing up like so many of these models will like hallucinate like now it's still remembering to create the part chart part pie chart so let's say yes oh wow so i really like this i it actually picked up that the column was blank so now it's just checking for uh another column um so the analysis shows all entries monthly bill usage are missing all right so it plotted something that i didn't want it to plot from here so i just said just use something that's not like phone numbers or anything like that. So I just plotted this basic data right here, but it actually works. So that's really cool. And it's super fast. Okay, so now we're gonna try something a little bit more advanced and let's see how it stacks up. So this is just a clip from one of my favorite podcasts, the All In Podcast. So David Sass won't let his friends use his private jet. And we are going to uh, say download. All right, so here I'm saying download this YouTube video right here, cut out the segment of one minute to one minute and 30 seconds and translate the audio into Spanish and add Spanish subtitles and save it in this location. Use YouTube-DLP for this. All right, so now it's building out the plan and with exactly what it has to do, I'm gonna say yes. Okay, so it says the video has successfully been downloaded right here. Now we are going to trim the video and we're gonna trim it from one minute to one minute and 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and say yes going to use this tool right here okay now we're going to transcribe it into spanish transcription with whisper so opening eyes whisper model we're going to say yes it's written all the code for that for us okay so it's recognized that the whisper module isn't installed we're going to say yes install it it's going to run that code automatically okay so it's been successfully installed we're going to say yes transcribe or whisper okay so the transcription has been complete now we're going to translate the transcription to spanish Okay, so one thing just to let you know, guys, I was having some issues. You want to make sure that you're telling it to save, at least from what I've seen, right? This, uh, you want to make sure that you're telling it to save the files into the file location that you're that you started an interpreter in. So here is the transcript right here. Okay, so now it's going to translate it. Okay, okay so it's realizing Google Translator uh, module isn't installed. Let's go ahead and say yes, guys. I hope you can see already that this is something like. There, there's is, is, is extreme power. Um, there, there's like crazy things you can do with this, guys. Like this is dead on. It's actually work. This is something that actually works. Okay, a lot of the other ones that we've covered don't work like this. Okay, now it's going to translate it, and boom, here we have the Spanish version. Now it's generating an SRT file. Now it's going to embed the subtitles into the video. All right, guys. So the final product is done. Let's go ahead and check this out. The trimmed video with subtitles. They'll let you borrow the plane if I'm not using it. Here's Sax the last time we went to dinner. Ready? The check comes. Miller and Lux lands on the table. Here's Sax. What you're seeing, see that? 
You know what that is? Sacks going for his wallet. You can just count it. It's <laughs> this almost is ironic, there. Because I, I can't remember He's the going. last time. He's almost I can't remember there. the last time you picked up a check, J. Cal. What do you? Every time I pick it up on the way in. Maybe for a slice of pizza. <laughs> Come on. Sax is one of the most generous people I know. I remember we went to a bar once. We barely had time to get a glass of still water. All right, guys. So that is, you know, fully without writing a single line of code. I literally just told, told Open Interpreter what to do, and it did it. Pretty crazy stuff. One side note, guys, I forgot to mention is in order to actually use open interpreter um you can use it with different models like i said you could use it with local models whatever the case may be but i'll leave this link down below in the description you're going to uh, when you first run it if you don't have your environment variable set up in your system it may ask you for your api key for open ai but if not you can set this open ai environment variable key uh, on windows it's going to look like this so you're going to run this command set x open ai and then your api key here on Linux or uh, Mac, it's going to look something like this. So I'll leave these down below in the description, as well as you can check out the docs on how to use it with a llama, as well as like Claude Sauna. You can just use um, a uh, something at the end of your interpreter, interpreter dash, whatever model, etc. So that will be in the docs, link down below. Now I'm saying use an AI model to compose a 30 second piano piece in the style of Mozart. Save it as a MIDI file. All right, so it's bringing everything up. It's, you know, basically just running the code here. All right, guys, so let's hear this beautiful Mozart symphony. All right, so obviously, you know, you could in, uh, improve the prompt and make it sound a lot better, but it's really cool that we could actually do this. You, get, you can actually get it to do custom actions for you, send emails. Like I said, you can get it to control your computer. You can get it to uh, convert files, such as, you know, if I wanted to convert this from a csv to or convert this from a doc to a pdf or convert this from a png to a jpeg you literally can just tell it in plain la language how to do or hey do this here's the file path whatever and it will do that so if i'm going to do more videos on open interpreter which i probably will uh, let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do any specific things with it I'll, uh, if you want me to do a video showing you the the os feature the operating system feature where it can actually control your computer take screenshots go to certain websites, do searches, all that good stuff. Let me know in the comments down below, guys. If you got some value here, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. We upload videos every single day on AI, business growth, automation, open source, AI coding, all that good stuff. So make sure to stay tuned for the daily uploads. Also too, guys, if you have a favorite AI agent tool, whether that's Open Interpreter, Agent Zero, Agent K, whatever. I mean, me personally at the moment, I am a, mine is Open Interpreter, but if you know anything that is better, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll do a video on it. Other than that, guys, I will see you in tomorrow's video. Keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.